So it's only going to be two type of people. It's going to be those that striving for righteousness and those that's going to stay wicked in wickedness. And there is where one of the deceptions of Satan is, where he comes to say that the law is done away with what you get in regular Sunday church. But if you look at what the definition of righteous is, it's lawful. The definition of wickedness or wicked is lawless. So your Sunday church saying the law is done away with is wicked. It's lawless. And then you look at our neighborhoods and that's the product of it. Lawlessness. You have robbing, stealing, killing, fornication, drugs. That's a product of the law is done away with. But so let me get Matthew uh, 24. Give me Matthew 24. And I'm going to have you give me Revelation 18. So what I'm here to do, I'm, I'm going to show you that this Bible is the truth. And that right now we're in a time of you got to be warned so blood ain't on our hands. Because it says if we know it and we the watchmen and don't come and tell you what's going to happen, the, you'll die, but the blood will be on our hands. But if we come and warn you, and you still do it, then it's the blood, you'll die, but the blood ain't on our hands no more. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 1. And Yeshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yeshua said unto him, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there should not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And, and the irony in this is, at the time, this is when Christ was walking the earth, and he was telling his disciples that the temple was going to be destroyed. And now fast forward, we in Babylon, and we're here to tell you that this country is about to get destroyed. But go ahead. Verse 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So the disciples asked Christ, what's going to be some signs we need to look for to know when you're coming back and when the end of this age is? All right? Let's listen. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, take heed that no man be deceived. The first one Christ said, take heed that no one be deceived. So it's apparent to know that in the last days, there'll be many deceptions, many lies. You will really have to diligently, not just think you following something and leave it at that. It says you have to study to show yourself approved. There's going to be so many lies that you're going to have to sort through to get to the truth. Go ahead. Verse 5. Well, let me turn this mic this way. That's what's going to happen. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So many will come and say they are followers of Christ. That they're upholding his ways and his walk, but will deceive many. So that's key to understand. That when you, when you go to a Sunday church, you have to weigh what they're saying with what Christ said. Otherwise, you might run the risk of being deceived. Go ahead. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So again... It says wars and rumors of wars. It's at the point now where every day for the past, I would say 20 years, it's been a war or a rumor of war. And, and understanding prophecy is certain nations in the end days that's going to bring about that final war that we're seeing now. All right? But it says be not troubled. So we're not out here to preach fear for you to get scared. It said these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Go ahead. For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So it says nation against nation. And here's a quick deception. We've been raised and brought up to believe that your nation is where you was born at. That, all right, we were born in America, so we're an American, and that's our nation. That's not in the Bible. In the Bible is your bloodline, who your forefathers were, according to scripture. And in the Bible, it's only set amount of families on the earth. You weren't your nationality and nation is not 
your country where you were born at. All right? So that's what we out here to also show that the, the, the lies of Satan was who the real children of Israel is. And that's a, a big problem. You got to understand, that's, the, that's why we are in this condition. For one, we are right around the corner. Look at the economy we're in. You can't afford nothing. Everything's going up. Gas prices going up. Why do you think this is happening? As if our people wasn't already at the bottom. They're squeezing us out, brothers and sisters. But there is still hope because our God said he changes not. He's still calling us back. Christ's first mission was to go after the lost sheep of the house of Israel, period. This work can't begin or move at all without my people. What you got? Oh, you still got the back to you. Did you finish that? Okay. Uh, give me a job, 15, 10. You get Matthew 5, 17. Christ, nor our God, change not. We're going to get that in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to what? But to fulfill. That fulfill means to carry out. He didn't come to destroy no law or anything, but to fulfill, bring the law back to the people that got us in the condition that we're in, that got us lost in the first place. You guys over there in the drive through McDonald's, let you go, they tell you, I'm gonna go fulfill your order, and you get around that window and, you, and your food ain't there. Fulfill means to, to carry out. And that's what Christ told us to do. So I don't understand today why our people think the law is done away with when Christ said he came to fulfill it. You place an order, they gonna fulfill it. You get to that window, they tell you, oh, your order done away with, bruh. You ain't got no order, it's done away with. You see how silly this sounds? This is what we doing to our God. But still, through all that, he still changed not. He still here from you, here from you, our people. We just got to come back. And it first starts with the law. That's where the change begins. We read earlier in Chronicles. That's where the land begins to heal. It's always been here amongst us, but the nations have hidden it from us. Because they know the power and what great people we are. And now it's time to change. It's time to start letting them capitalize on us through music, through entertainment. They know we're the greatest people to do this stuff. That's why they control it all. But in the end, it always comes back on our people. We always still at the bottom, the bottom of the bottom, while they continue to capitalize and, and, and get richer and richer with their families off of our backs. Enough is enough, brothers and sisters. It's time to change. Enough is enough. Uh, give me uh, Romans uh, 6, verse 5. Read what you got, John. John, chapter 15, verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even if I, as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. See that? That's how we abide in the love of our God. That's how we abide in the love of our Lord and Savior. Once again, keeping those commandments, coming back to them. But we can't abide in anything if we first don't come back. That's where it begins. We've been taught too long that we're under grace. 
Well, this was under grace that's gotten our people. So how is that working out? We've been taught the law is done away with. How is that working out for our people? Read what you got, Romans? Romans, Romans what? This is the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Read that again, brother. I don't think they heard you. I don't think they heard you. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. God forbid. thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed and and, cr and crushed away and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away I had a sister come up earlier and ask us what are we gonna do about all these police shootings my answer to her the Bible tells us how to come up out of that if we start teaching these, these law statutes and commandments to our children, these curses will be lifted. And we wouldn't have to worry about that. But as long as we stay in sin, we're going to continue to see our kids getting shot in the street. Because we teaching the sin. We glorifying the sin. We glorifying street violence. We glorifying this hip hop music that don't teach our that teaches our kids to 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 mistreat women. To that, that uh, the award in life or the blessings in life was to get get this money, no matter what, whether it be through drug dealing or prostitution. The Bible said that we would be cursed. Our, uh, it, uh, thy baskets would be cursed. Our businesses would be cursed. But we sure are successful at the businesses that kill our own people, like drug dealing. We successful at that. But we can't own a store. We can't go get no nihilators from our own people. We can't get a bag of chips from our own people. We got to go to another country, other nations to get our merchandise. Why is that? Read. Verse 34, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see, which thou, which thou shalt see. Verse 35, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs, which with a sore bulge that cannot be healed. This is just a few of the curses, folks. And it came because we decided not to love our Lord thy God. And now that we waking up to it, most of y'all flipping through your TikTok and you finding out that we are the Israelites. You finding out what we supposed to be doing. Y'all know I'm talking to you on the street all the time and people know that you're the Israelites now. But we don't care. We want we want what Massa got, got for us. As long as long as long as we can get them checks. Every month, we cool with that. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 41. Thou shalt begot sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Verse 42. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The stranger that was with you, when you were in the land of Israel, you had a lot of people, other nations that were living there with you. And you were above all of them. All these people that own these stores, some of them was there with you. And they got up above you and now they own all the stores. Their, their countries are, are, are prospering, but you're still in captivity here in America and across the four corners of the earth thinking that you're free. Thinking that the Democrats gonna save your life when they can't stand you. Joe Biden can't stand you. Go look on, up on YouTube and calling you the N-word. And you got the nerve to say Donald Trump is racist. And I'm not no Donald Trump supporter, so don't get it twisted.
Deuteronomy 64, 68. We just reading these curses. Showing you who you are and what you got to do to come up out of it. Read. I'm going to get into the gospel in a second here. I just want, I want this last part to hit home so that you know that this is who you're talking about. The young man said that uh, we didn't come over here in ships. He's partially right. Well, he, he's, he's not right, but we, we didn't all come over in slave ships, tribe again. The Native Americans are part of the children of Israel, and yes, they were here already. But most of y'all and him, you came over here on slave ships. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. That means you scattered you over in India, you over in China, you over here in America, you down in the West Indies, in the Jamaicas, you in Puerto Rico. The stuff that you've heard before about Christ, I'm not gonna say all of it, but most of the, the, the depictions and description of Christ that you heard is false. They're making you think that when he comes back, it's a day of joy and all of these things are gonna be, you know, it's gonna be great. But at the end of the day, really what's gonna happen is when he comes back, a lot of people who thought they knew Christ, they're going to find out that they actually didn't know him. And they're going to be the ones, when that tongue come out with fire, they're going to get cut down. And I'm just going to leave you with a couple things here just to prove what I'm saying. Because right now you follow me, right? The white willy hair, the dark brown skin. You both follow me, right? It's amazing, just like Amazon. Come on now, give me what you got. Let's go, brother. We got to keep it going. These brothers, they taking their time with us. This is the book of Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the word Egypt actually translates to slavery. Now you answered the last question. You answered the first one. So I'm going to come back to you again now. What people in the United States do you know of that went into slavery? A million people. Huh? A million people. How many people? A million people. Well, a million people. But I mean, what race of people went into slavery? Black black people all right so he said he's gonna bring you into slavery again with ships now i'm gonna come back to you Devante. when they brought us over here into slave as slaves what did they travel what did they put us on boats boats ships exact brother i'm telling you if i had some money i'm broke but if i had some money man i'd be giving it to y'all because y'all winning y'all y'all getting all the questions right so check this out the most high said that if you don't do what i say because i don't have time to read the whole chapter for you because i know y'all y'all got business to take care of right y'all y'all look like some young enterprising men but at the end of the day what he said is if you don't do what i say i'm gonna take you into slavery again with ships that's what he said he gonna do so that happened to black people come on by the way whereof i spoke unto thee thou should see it no more again so what he's saying is when i'm delivering this message to you the place where they was at he said you're not gonna see you're not gonna see that homeland no more which is why we ain't been over to israel and all these different places where i'm telling you this stuff is gonna happen you ain't gonna never see that place no more because i'm gonna take you as slaves and i'm gonna put you in ships and i'm gonna send you all around the world come on and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And it says you're going to be sold to your enemies for bond men and bond women. Bond men and bond women, that means as slaves. So to recap, what this is saying is you're going to go, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to put you on ships, I'm going to make you slaves, and I'm going to send you all around the world. It's only one people that we know of that that has happened to. And that's going to be to us, right? Because think about it when you went to school they never told you about some white people that got on some ships and was taking the slaves right do you ever hear anything about nah you ain't hear about no japanese people getting on ships and getting taken all around the world and slaves right exactly it never happened to them but now let me hit you with this one other thing before i let y'all go so i'm gonna prove i'll prove them to you look the people in the bible they brown people they black people i got all kind of history books where i could prove all the other stuff the people that you see in africa right now like in egypt and Libya, with you know the arab people they didn't always live there there was brown people like you that lived in Egypt and Libya and all of those places. The Israelites was also black people as well. So it, it, it's no question. We done proved that part of it already. But the thing is, 
we have to actually start to change our ways so that we can be in the good graces of God, be in the good graces of Christ. So that's, that's really what I want to impress upon you too. Know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Understand that the people that came in off of slave ships, that those people actually were you. Matter of fact, uh, Brother Reggie, Google slave map 1747, 1747, and then I'm going to let you all go. But before I let you go, check this out too. Black people aren't the only people that are the Israelites or the people of God. Here's the thing. There's, if you go like, you, you know, Puerto, Puerto Ricans, right? Dominicans, right? Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Native Americans, people that's on Indian reservations, even right here in Ohio, when they came over and they started uh, unearthing stuff on the Indian reservations, they was finding stuff that was written in Hebrew. That's what Jewish people, uh, that's what Jewish people write in, right? Slave map, 1747. That's what, uh, that's what Jewish people speak, right? Hebrew, right? So they came here on the Indian reservations. They found Hebrew. They're like, how, how could this possibly happen? The reason is because they was actually, are actually Hebrews, those descendants of those people. And what you should know is before we went into slavery and they brought us with ships, here's what these evil people did. They came over here. I'm talking about Christopher Columbus. You heard of him, right? You're right. You, also, you, you don't celebrate Columbus Day, do you? But you take the day off, and I ain't mad at you. So check this out. So Columbus and them, they come over here. They bring Hebrew interpreters with them because they know the Hebrews was here. They put the Indians in the slavery. The people in Puerto Rico, the people in the Dominican Republic, people in Haiti, all of those people, they put them into slavery before the black people went into slavery. They killed so many of them because they would just work them till they die. So they... Sunday, Sunday worshiping, and why it is not the day that the Most High had laid down for us to serve. Uh, brother, why don't you start with that verse for me? Book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. God ended his work on the seventh day, not the first day. The seventh is, sun is Saturday. Not Sunday. I don't know where the Christian church get this, that we're supposed to serve the Most High on a Sunday. That's not correct. It's actually on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. Continue on. And he rested on the seventh day. Correct. He rested on the seventh day. That's the day we're supposed to rest and serve the Most High. He gave us six days to work. But on the seventh day, we're supposed to rest. Too many times people are working on the Sabbath, on that Saturday, and they're not resting, but they choose a Sunday as their rest day, which is incorrect, which is the first day of the week. You have six days to work, as my brother Sadak had already said, but you choose to just follow the, the, the laws of uh, the, the Jesuits and stuff. That's not correct. You're supposed to rest on the Sabbath day. Continue on, brother. From all his work, which he had made. Correct. From all his works that he had made. Sunday to Friday. He, taught, he did all his work, and on Saturday, he rested and everything. He did not get out there and work and everything. Continue on, brother. Verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work. Good, good. He sanctified that day. He made it holy. He rested on that day. He did not rest on Friday. He did not rest on Sunday. It said nothing in the Bible about him resting on Sunday. We got all these Christian churches out here serving the Most High on a Sunday. Where is that in the Bible? It says that he rested on Sunday. He served me on Sunday. There's nowhere in there it says that. So I'm not for sure where they got that from. But in the Bible, they read the same Bible we reading. Why are they serving on a different day? Why are they serving the Most High on a different day? That's not the day he told you to serve. You, when you say you follow the book, you say you follow the laws, why are you serving on it? Why are you serving on Sunday? Why are you not serving on Saturday, which is the proper day? Give me Matthew 17, verse uh, 5, 17. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Okay. This, is, this is Christ telling you about the laws and statutes. He even going behind what was said in, the, uh, in Genesis. Think not, I am, think not that I am come to destroy the law. Think that I come not to destroy the law. Go ahead. Or the prophets. I am not to come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's right. Christ even said, I come not to destroy the laws or the prophets that came before him. He said, I came not but to fulfill. That means 
everything that the Most High put down there, he came to fulfill it. He didn't come change it. Everybody said the laws are done away with. Christ said, Christ said out of his own mouth, I come not to destroy. Christ didn't destroy anything. He came to fulfill it. So these people talk about how they, how Christ saved, they changed everything, how the laws are done away with. Absolutely not. The word says that he came to fulfill it. That means he came to finish what the Most High said do. He did not come down and change what the Father told him to do. He did exactly what the Father said. So if he, if Christ doing what the Father said, why can't we? Why can't we be out here serving the Most High on his proper day, was on the Sabbath day? Why are we doing it a different day? Why are we out here serving on Sunday and everything? Brother, give, give, me, uh, give me Exodus 20, verse 8. We should be out here serving him as one. For so many times we up here, we doing different doctrines and everything. You know, you got the, you got the, the Ishmaelites, Ishmael, Islam doing one thing. Then you got Judas. Then you got uh, Pentecostal. You got all these different religions. And that's why people are so lost right now. There's so many different religions out here. And no one knows up from down, right from left. Because you could tell you just it's totally lost. Give me that bu verse, brother. Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's in one of the Ten Commandments. That's the laws that Christ was talking about. That is in the Ten Commandments. That's what Moses gave, was, was given to Moses back then. Ten Commandments. We can't even follow those. How are we going to make it out here? We, we could follow worldly laws, but we can't follow these. We can't follow uh, the Most High's laws where he said keep the Sabbath. We have a problem with that. We got churches all up and down this street, all up and down Cleveland, Ohio, and they up here serving on Sunday. Where does it say that? There's no place in the Bible that you can find that says serve the Most High on a Sunday, that he said keep the Sabbath on a Sunday. Nowhere he said that. That was not done. It wasn't in the Bible. It was not preached there. He never said keep it on a Sunday. He said keep it on the Sabbath and everything. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. You see, and you're going to see where the problem comes in. You're going to see where if you disobey the Most High, you're going to see where these.